Hear the word of God. Jesus crossed the lake again. And on the other side, a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Jairus, one of the synagogue leaders, came forward. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded with him. My daughter is about to die. Please come and place your hands on her so that she can be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A swarm of people were following Jesus, crowding in on him. A woman was there who had been bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a lot under the care of many doctors and had spent everything she had without getting any better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Because she had heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes. She was thinking, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Her bleeding stopped immediately, and she sensed in her body that her illness had been healed. At that very moment, Jesus recognized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, don't you see the crowd pressing against you? You asked who touched me. Jesus looked around carefully to see who had done it. The woman, full of fear and trembling, came forward. Knowing what had happened to her, she fell down in front of Jesus and told him the whole truth. He responded, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace, healed from your disease. While Jesus was still speaking with her, messengers came from the synagogue leader's house saying to Jairus, your daughter has died. Why bother the teacher any longer? But Jesus overheard their report and said to the synagogue leader, don't be afraid, just keep trusting. He didn't allow anyone to follow him except Peter, James, and John, James's brother. They came to the synagogue leader's house, and he saw a commotion with the people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, What's all this commotion and crying about? The child isn't dead, she's only sleeping. They laughed at him, but he threw them all out. Then taking the child's parents and his disciples with him, he went to the room where the child was. Taking her hand, he said to her, Talitha kuom which means, young woman, get up. Suddenly the young woman got up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. They were shocked. He gave them strict orders that no one should know what had happened. Then he told told them to give her something to eat. Let us pray. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire and lighten us with your celestial fire. For if you are with us, then nothing else matters. And if you are not with us, then nothing else matters. Be with us, we pray, in the name of your beloved. Amen. On Sunday afternoon, I was on Facebook looking at a number of people who were posting Me Too on their wall. I was puzzled as to what all these posts meant until I got to a friend's post that explained, if all the women who have been sexually harassed or assaulted wrote Me Too as a status, we might give people a sense of the magnitude of the problem. This, of course, was in response to Harvey Weinstein's scandal that has dozens of actors and people who work in the film industry talking about how they were sexually harassed by him. Among those coming forward were Angelina Jolie and Gwyneth Paltrow. I say this not because it's news, but because the world's news brought, was brought to mind as I read the scripture, and as God would have it, this week's theme is Be Brave. We are talking in this series about the advice we would give our younger selves with the experience of years, uh, how we would look back Um, as we are older and wiser, at least older and better able to see the big picture. As we talk about the wisdom we have gained over the younger version of ourselves and look to scripture to see what we can glean from its words of wisdom. We understand that some of the uncertainty and fear we felt as younger people did not serve us well at the time and is best cast aside. The story of Jairus 
Jairus's daughter and the woman with the hemorrhage all point to people who to varying degrees left uh, lived with uncertainty and fear and yet demonstrated remarkable bravery Jairus is the leader of the synagogue someone who in the eyes of many is supposed to have everything together leaders are assumed to have the competency to lead to get things done but his life is interrupted by his daughter's illness an illness that none of the traditional healers could heal in his desperation to get his child back he seeks out the healer everyone is talking about this healer called Jesus to do so he has to swallow some of his pride to admit that he doesn't have it all together to go to the one that some religious leaders say is a fool uh, not to be listened to is challenging all the religious authorities of the day and therefore to be shunned by scripture's report he runs to Jesus ignoring the decorum of his position and his status in society throwing himself at Jesus feet begging for his help his love his desperation his fervent hope for healing for his beloved daughter makes him completely vulnerable the woman in the crowd is also vulnerable though she doesn't start from the position of authority that Jairus started from she does not have any standing in society except perhaps as an ostracized outsider who has been an outsider for 12 years because of her being unclean by the way she has had this disease for 12 years and 12 years is the age of Jairus's daughter she doesn't have any right to touch anyone, let alone Jesus, as she is ritually unclean. So by her very act of coming to the crowd, she is vulnerable to derision and ostracism as she bravely approaches the healer. Finally, we have the 12-year-old daughter on the cusp of adulthood, the time when uh, children in that day and age were ready to have children, ready to be married, and start into adulthood. There were no teenage years back then. That's a modern construct so at 12 she should be able to be married and yet she is brought down with a disease that makes her sick unto death a disease that no one could cure each of these is vulnerable and desperate each needs Jesus for healing each of us is vulnerable in one way or another, we all have our wounds. We all have our scars. We desperately try to hide them so that people will live under the illusion that, that we have it all together, so that we will convince ourselves that we have it all together. It's frightening to admit that we are vulnerable, that we may be helpless. If we admit our vulnerability to others, someone may take advantage of us. If we admit our vulnerability to ourselves, it may be too much for us to take. If we admit our vulnerability to loved ones, we may be met with disappointment because they're counting on us to be strong. And let's face it, in this society, it's frowned on to be needy, to not have it all together. We worry about more, more about what other people think about us than we worry about being genuine. We put on a front of having no needs, no worries, because everyone else is doing it too. And they and we do it so convincingly that we convince everyone that everyone else has all their ducks in a row when we can't even find our ducks. But it's only in admitting that we don't have it all together, that we open the door to someone helping us. We can only be as open to being helped as we are open to letting people know that we need help, that we can't do this alone, that we're willing to try something new and discover the courage to act dif differently, to invite into our lives a new world where the wolf lies down with the lamb, where the plowshares are, the swords are beaten to plowshares shares, and a little child will lead them. Our willingness to risk vulnerability is a small part in helping bringing the kingdom of heaven down to earth. Maybe we can pledge to be the kind of community that accepts everyone just the way they are. 
and understands that we all have our weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Maybe we can promise to be a safe place, a caring community, where we can come as we are rather than pretending to be the person other, we think others want us to be. Because, let's face it, vulnerability is at the heart of faith. We as a faith community believe in a God who cannot, we cannot see our touch. We are loyal to a God that we hear reports of that we have given our lives to, who has moved us in some way and loves us no matter what. Faith is vulnerable, and so is hope, and so is love. It is our faith that gives purpose and meaning to our lives. It gives us the sense of belonging and joy. It is the source of our courage and our creativity. We are not fooling God with the masks we wear. God knows us inside and out and loves us for who we really are. When I first read this question that's the basis for this series, as I, as I told you a few weeks ago, that um, what would you tell your younger self if you could encapsulate that advice in just two words. Um, the first thing that popped into my head when I read that question before I read the hundreds of answers was be brave. In response to this question, other people posted be self-reliant, embrace confidence, don't fear, be adventurous, don't settle. We sometimes think that being brave means doing something grandiose, but being brave simply means doing something significant that stretches us beyond what we might normally do. When we talk about bravery, what comes to mind for you? For some, it may be some sort of physical feat climbing a mountain you thought you couldn't climb, or going to war, or hitchhiking in a foreign country, or um, helping someone get to the hospital, running a marathon, physical kinds of challenges that we have faced and overcome. But for many of us, the bravest thing we have ever done or could do is tell the truth tell the truth about ourselves. That's what those women and a few men were doing on Twitter and Facebook, telling the truth when they said, me too, and admitting to the world that they were survivors of sexual assault or harassment. Being brave requires first being quiet enough to listen to what your life is telling you to not crowd out that voice that is speaking to you with eating or overactivity or screen time or whatever shuts down your having to think and go into those places that you consider dark. But really taking time to listen to what your emotions tell you. Telling your truth is the ultimate bravery. And just like Jairus, just like Jairus' daughter, just like the bleeding woman, we follow our faith and lean into bravery. Dear younger me, be brave, tell the truth, and hold on to faith. Let us pray. We come to you, O oh God, knowing that you know everything about us and love us all the more because of it. Give us the courage to risk vulnerability, to drop the masks we hold, the masks we hold in front of our lives and use our energy in ways that bring about your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.